Hello everyone, my name is Jason and the day is here. It's finally time to install a backsplash on the kitchen wall. I've been wanting to do this for a long time and this is the weekend I'm doing it. So, I'd like to create a video that details as comprehensively as possible the finer points of the installation plus typical questions that beginners have when, do, when taking a project on like this. So some of those um, questions would be how to cut the backsplash to fit around electrical outlets. I will do that in detail, no rush job there at all. I'm also going to cover what tools you need, uh, what type of mortar is the best, the mortar sealer, and how to apply the backsplash to the wall, whether it be an adhesive mat or a thin set or mastic product. So I've even got uh, one trick I think I uh, discovered all on my own, so I want to see if that's going to work. So please stick around for that. If there's other questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comments section. I'm pretty good with answering those as quickly as possible, even though this channel is not monetized. So stick around. Uh, hopefully this will be interesting and pain free. We will see. Okay, so once you've decided what backsplash to go with, you're gonna to need to make a few more decisions. Primarily, how are you gonna apply it to the wall? There's a few different options here. You can get an adhesive mat like I did, or you can uh, do it the old time way, which is uh, using thin set or mastic. Now, I chose this product because simply the ease of use of applying it. You can um, do it at whatever time frame you need to. If you don't have all day to complete the project or even the weekend, um, you can stretch this out to as long as you'd like. You just cut it to fit, apply it. It's got another side of, of a, a film on it, so you can remove that and apply your backsplash whenever you'd like. Also, this doesn't require you to protect your, your services as much. You're not going to have mastic or thin set falling all over your countertop. You also don't run the risk of applying too much thin set or mastic to your wall and having it seep through the cracks on your uh, backsplash here. Also, you eliminate any um, kind of smearing you would get on these pieces and, and needing to clean that off. I thought uh, for the price that I couldn't really pass up a real clean, easy, um, time, you know, non-time sensitive application method um, than this. I thought this was a much better deal. These are about $25 per roll. Your Mastic or Thin Set is probably going to run you around $10, but keep in mind you would have to buy maybe a trowel or two, which might add, you know, $5 to $10 to your overall cost. Um, not to mention the amount of prep you're going to need to do to protect your counter. Um, I think this is probably a little over double the cost of what you would pay using the mastic or thin set method, but I think well worth it for somebody who maybe is just doing this for the first time or only needs to do it once. After you've decided how you're going to apply your backsplash to the wall, you're going to need to figure out what kind of route to use. Now there's several different types, but what you're going to want to really look for is a sanded and unsanded type. Now this all depends on what type of backsplash you're putting up and what it's made of. Ours is made of glass and stone. So the sanded grout has sand in it. The unsanded grout does not have sand in it. The unsanded grout is what we are going to need because we have glass in our backsplash. It is very important that you don't use sanded on a glass surface or some of the metal surfaces because it can actually scratch those and damage them. So after you've decided what type of grout you need, you're also going to need a grout sealer. This particular product is a spray-on product and it essentially has a nozzle at the top and you're just going to aim and spray at your backsplash when it's all completed. This helps to seal the grout in, that way bacteria is not growing in there and it becomes impervious to water. Okay, so after you've figured out your backsplash, what adhesive you're going to use, what kind of grout you're going to use, and after you've got the sealer, you need to start thinking about what tools you need to complete the job. Main tools are a grout trowel, which is this. Now, this is the only trowel I needed because I'm going with the adhesive mat here. If you were going to use the thin set or mastic, 
you would also need to buy a couple trowels in order to apply those. Some other tools that you're gonna need are these tile spacers. These will fit nicely on your countertop or whatever you are setting your backsplash on. Um, these will give a good uniform uh, level nature to your, to your job. Let's talk about cutting for a minute. I know that's probably the one step where everyone might be freaking out a little bit, don't really know how to cut glass or the best way to do it, what way you know, does the less damage to the backsplash itself. Well, uh, I, I was lucky in that I knew someone that has tile saw, so I'm able to borrow that. Although it didn't have the right blade, so I went ahead and got a blade. This is blade is exactly designed to cut glass tile. This was found at Menards. Again, this was about $23 or so. They ended up just kind of having everything in one section, so that was really nice. Um, but you will need a glass tile blade. Don't overlook that. If you buy a, a diamond blade and it's specifically not for glass, it might be for something else, you could still end up chipping and you just won't have a very smooth cut. So that's really important. You know, you're, you're spending a decent amount of money putting this up, so to go cheap on the saw or not buy the right saw blade, it, it's just not a smart move. So definitely make sure you have the right tools. Another thing you'll need is a tile grout sponge. This is used to clean the grout off of the backsplash after application. I also got one with a scrubbing pad on the back. It's this kind of white, more abrasive area. It's not gonna scratch your, your uh, backsplash or anything like that, but it does remove the haze after the final drying of the grout. This isn't completely necessary. I think you could get away with using a towel or even a microfiber cloth, something like that to remove that final uh, haze that comes um, from applying the grout. And that pretty much does it for the tools. Um, obviously, don't forget your bucket. If you're using Thinset or Mastic, I would get two buckets. Um, I'm going to use this bucket for the grout. Hopefully, call it good there. Okay, first things first, it's time to move any appliance that might be in the way of your installation. I just have this stove to move. What I'm going to do is take some cardboard, put it under the feet, and hopefully slide it right out. Okay, once you remove your appliance and you cleaned up the year's worth of dust and dirt up under there, it's time to surface prep the walls. Remember with this adhesive mat, there's really no prep we need to do. The only thing we need to do is make sure the wall is clean and free from dust or any kind of uh, food stain or, or something like that. Uh, one thing though that you will need to consider when putting this up is making sure that your surface is dry. This does need a dry surface to adhere to properly, so make sure the surface is dry. Um, after you've done that, go ahead and get a level or a straight edge of some kind and verify that your walls don't have any irregularities, that the wall is nice and flat. You don't want any uh, wavy surfaces in your uh, drywall if you're using this product. It's way less forgiving than the thin set or the uh, mastic. So if you do run into that problem, it may be better to use one of those other two uh, solutions. However, you could also use a leveling compound to kind of smooth out those irregularities. This wall happened to be really nice, so not worried about that at all. I also took a level and just went along this uh, surface here and everything checked out. So everything should be good to go for this one. And the next step will be removing the covers to our outlets and uh, start putting up this uh, tile mat. Okay, I got the walls all cleaned up and prepped. It actually turned out that they were a lot dirtier than I thought. So just make sure you are looking at your walls closely and getting those as clean as you can. Now it's time to take the covers off of our electrical outlets. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so one thing to then absolutely do after you have switched the breaker off is go ahead and test the outlets themselves. Plug your phone in, see if the charging icon appears. Just do something simple like that in case you don't have a multimeter or some other way to verify that the power is off. And don't forget if you do have a garbage disposal that you're getting the power to that switch off as well. Those are usually separate breakers. Once you get the covers off, there's a few more screws you need to remove in order to separate the switch or the plug outlet from the wall or the receptacle itself. So go ahead and remove those and 
then we'll continue on. Okay, once you remove the screws to free the switch or the electrical outlet from the receptacle itself, you can go ahead and pull those out an inch or two. Doesn't need to be a lot, just enough to get the backsplash underneath there. Uh, and inevitably, removing those will kick up a bit more debris, so make sure you get that all cleaned up. But after you've done that, it's time to apply the tile mat. So what we can do is open this up, uh, cut it to length, cut it to size, and we should be okay. Uh, we're going to start on the other side of the kitchen for this, and luckily for us, we've got an electrical outlet to, to deal with right away, so let's move over there. <laughs> 